my name my name is Abraham S. Dugle. I was born in Kentucky, Louisville, 1981. I was sent to Africa at the age of five to my grandma who raised me. She's pretty and I came by the age of 17. And I live, I live in Kentucky, I live in New Jersey, I live in Philadelphia, I live in California, I live in, I've been everywhere in America. My name is Ann Wright. I'm a retired U.S. Army colonel and a former U.S. diplomat who resigned in 2003 in opposition to the war in Iraq. I'm Reverend Graylin Hagler. I'm pastor of Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ here in Washington, D.C. My name is Brian Becker. I'm the national coordinator of the Answer Coalition. My name is Akbar Mohammed. I'm the international representative for the Nation of Islam. My name is Eugene, E-U-G-E-N-E, -E, per year, P-U-R-Y-E-A-R. -E uh, I'm an organizer with the Answer Coalition. Drones, they want them in the cities of America. So if they think that you are an enemy of America in some form or fashion or enemy of the community, they can use a drone in the cities of America. And that's what they're working towards. You know, overseas, they do it with impunity but they're working on in America, so we have to stop it. We can all agree upon that, so let's work on what we can agree upon. We're here today in Washington, D.C., first in front of the White House and now in front of General Atomics Corporation to say to the government and to the corporations that make profits from the production of drone aircraft that we, the people of the United States, oppose this. It's illegal, it's wrong, it's an act of imperialism, and we're trying to build a new movement against drone warfare because it is the new weapon of choice by the empire. We say the people of Yemen and Afghanistan and Somalia and Iraq and Palestine are our sisters and brothers and when you kill them you're killing our people. We're here in solidarity. We have more in common with the victims of drone warfare than we do with those who make mega profits from this murderous technology. That's why we will make this dramatic action. We want to go to the very doorstep of General Atomics and tell them, no justice, no peace. When we really look at this, this model of drone attacks, it's unethical, it's immoral, it's illegal. Uh, people are basically being killed without any due process, without any accountability, uh, and, and the fact is it's not even suspects, so-called, that are being killed, but, it's being, but, but children are being killed, and, 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 and people who are particularly thoroughly innocent, no question about uh, their existence are being killed. These killer drones that the Obama administration is using in Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia, Afghanistan are wrong. As a military person, I think these are these are actually not saving American lives because we're killing so many innocent civilians in the tribal areas of Pakistan. Those Afghan soldiers have family members that have been killed by these drones and they're taking it out on the soldiers back in those compounds. See right now they say we don't have to get no soldiers killed. We can kill as many of our enemies with these drones, these unmanned drones, and we can keep our people safe. And so the ignorant people would promote the idea of drones so that they wouldn't have to send their sons into battle. The way the politician is treating America is wrong. They're playing toys with the citizen. You know, their attempt to hit the reset button on imperialism and, you know, replace sort of the large-scale military interventions with the drones and so-called light footprint warfare hasn't fooled us, hasn't fooled the American people. We're going to come out and oppose their same brutal uh, policies that are only aimed at domination no matter what they are, whether it's drones, tanks, whatever, we're still there. Because there need to be more outrage in the nation. Uh, because right now, as long as people don't see the blood, as people don't hear the explosions, it happens around the world. Uh, it's not even covered on the news unless there's some type of uh, a claim that, that so many innocent people have been killed and then it's really quickly swept under the rug. The insidious nature of drone warfare is that all the bleeding is done on the other side. You could see before the Iraq war, hundreds of thousands, really millions of people came into the streets in the United States because hundreds of thousands of U.S. troops were going to Iraq just as they had gone to Vietnam. The government's making a calculation that if they can carry out a quiet form of warfare, a warfare where all the bleeding is done on the other side of the planet. And then you look at what these drones are doing in terms of what the illegality of a president of the United States now becoming the prosecutor, the the judge, the jury, and the executioner, which is not his role. 
and yet he's doing that with the, this weapon system. So I think this is a, that's an atrocity. It's a war crime, actually, I think, what, what the Obama administration is doing with these drones. And these drones would go out and kill those people. Wouldn't be no court of law, bring them in, the justice and your rights and a lawyer. They would start killing people. And, and somehow it's a sanitized war so that somebody halfway around the world can sit there with a joystick and rain down death on innocent people in a village in a hamlet somewhere. And that is obviously ridiculous, immoral, and it's unconscionable and something we need to stand up for. They got video games, 30 years old, 25 years old, they think they have video games. Yeah. They think you can, you can take a gun and just shoots people, okay? And what America has to, this, uh, you know, our world is, the American world is a little over 200 years old. If we continue to buy this past, will this country survive or will it collapse into chaos? And where we will be after the people in the Senate and the Congress and the White House has to be an armed fortress, uh, so-called to run this country. And so at that time, if the country reaches that point, drones would be their model of warfare. Unless we get the anger, unless we really raise the question of whether this is morally right for us to be engaged in as a nation, it'll continue to happen and nobody will be held accountable. So that's why we need to continue to organize, continue to build, continue to speak the truth, and continue to lift up the issue because somehow people need to understand and become as morally outraged as we are. We should go to Washington, where we got the Senate, Sit in the Senate, all you young folks. Come to Congress and sit and listen. Know your congressman. Then the American people will stay silent. And they will stay silent unless they know what's going on, unless we refute the propaganda of the war machine and of the government. So it's going to be a harder trek, but we have to do it because this is the new stage of imperialist war. Well, finding friends uh, that, that kind of believe the same way you do, that that you can have a little support network and it may be peace action groups uh, uh, that are in your town or your university uh, to to or create one create one to so that there can be a nucleus of people who have the same beliefs the same concerns about social justice issues about war and peace and so that you can mobilize together because it's a lot easier when you're out on the streets and you know three or four people or five or six or hundreds of them now that I, I know now because I've been a part of this for 10 years. So it's important to have friends around you and then that gives you the courage to reach out to people who may not agree with you and to have the conversations about why it's important that somebody, uh, well you try to get someone to listen to you about what you believe are the important issues of the day. I mean, the thing that people have to remember is like everyone you see out protesting, we're just regular everyday people. You know, I mean, we like the same things, we do the same things. We just know that something has to happen and we have to do it together. So the one thing people need to remember is, A, you're not alone. There's many of us out here who are, who are hoping. And even when it seems, I mean, listen, I'm from a red state, I'm from a conservative area, and it seems like there's no one with you. But like I said, we had a third of my high school walk out against the war. And, you know, the power is in our hands. There's many of us, there's organizations, there's information. There's so much to back you up. It's just the will to do it. And even if you Listen, if you're working 60 hours a week, you don't have any time but two hours. Those two hours, I mean, organizations like ours, the Answer Coalition, and people can look us up at answercoalition.org. Listen, it doesn't matter whether you have 60 hours or whether you have two hours. Those two hours could be the best two hours that we have. You could call 50 people to come out to demonstrations like this and help mobilize and help organize. You can do so many things, even with a little bit of time, no matter what your living situation, no matter how much money you have, no matter what your time situation, there is a way you can make a difference. And there's activist groups like our group, the Answer Coalition and many other groups who help put this on that I mean that's all we want to do is help facilitate whatever time you have whatever resources you have to getting you involved in this movement focus on the goal is, is do do any of us tolerate drone strikes shouldn't be about who we are and where we come from do we tolerate drone strikes we got to put aside petty differences for a greater end find out the things that we can agree on the things that we disagree on Put them on the side for a minute until you can form some unity because there's always the enemy who sends people in to keep you uh, on those differences. They exacerbate those differences and the people find it difficult to work together to move forward. If we didn't have even differences, we would have probably had, this is a good crowd, but we'd have probably had three times this, but there's petty difference. I'm not going to join them. I disagree with this. One. So we have to stop doing that and look at what our goal is now. We don't teach 
people, uh, you know, to act on your conscience. You know, focus on what unites you, not what divides you. I mean, like all the groups who came here today, uh, some of them were single issue groups. Some of them are groups that probably didn't like each other. Some of them are groups with different imperatives. But we recognize we all hate this drone warfare campaign. Uh, it affects all of us in a big way. So let's just unite on this one issue here, anti-drone warfare. And, you know, we can work some of the other stuff out later. But start small. Don't start big. I think sometimes we think, okay, let's all just be united on every single issue because we're so close. And then that's when everything falls apart because then it's the little things or, or sometimes the big things they get in our way. Let's start small with the things we know we're united on, successfully do those, and through the process of working together and building relationships, I think it's going to help build up a stronger, more united movement. Unless we are vigilant, then we will definitely go back to policies of the past. We will definitely re resurrect the models of oppression of the past, the models of exploitation of the past. So we got to remain vigilant and, and fight every day to protect what gains and also at the same time to try to advance the movement. We need change and change comes from the bottom up. Change starts from you, you the editor, change starts from you, you the cameraman. Yeah. So make sure you come, it's late. Yeah. We, like, we should fight for our future. These people that are old, they want to fuck up America. We can't sit and do that, okay? We can do it if we fight every day. We can defeat evil. Every day before you come and pray to God, God, no weapons shall fall against me shall ever prosper. You will be safe and we can defeat them. Okay? May God bless you, sir. You too, man. Thank you. You know, we have to show that we're not going to be pushed around by the police who abuse their authority all the time. Here, I, I have a permit. I've Let me see your permit. I want to see it. Okay. Let's walk over here. So we can well, I'm just grabbing it out of my hand. Because I want to see it. So you can let go of the permit. Okay. Let me see your permit. Just let me know. Come over here. We are protesting drone warfare in the U.S. and all around the world, Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. So say no to drones all around, standing in solidarity with hundreds of millions of people around the world who are experiencing the horrifying, deadly effects of drone warfare. We need more people on the streets. That's all I can say for now. May God bless the United States of America. May God bless you folks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Keep coming. <laughs> That's a strong grip you got there, man. Yeah, yeah. do you oh, like bro it? Broke my hand. Do you like 